Item number, SCP-3092. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-3092 is to be contained in an empty room equipped with a single compatible power outlet. It is not to be plugged in or stocked with toys unless actively being tested. Testing with SCP-3092 must be pre-approved by at least one Level 3 staff member, and at least one Foundation agent armed with a net launcher. Correction. Mock tranquilizer rifle. See Addendum 3092-01 and 02. Must be present in order to subdue and contain resultant SCP-3092-A instances. SCP-3092-A instances are to be contained individually in standard containment kennels modified with two additional locks, at least one of which should be biometrically operated in order to prevent further containment breaches. They are to be provided amenities in exchange for compliant behavior, but none that could serve as tools or aids in an escape attempt. Should one or more SCP-3092-A instances successfully escape containment, a team of agents armed with net launchers Correction, mock tranquilizer rifles, see addendum 3092-01 and 02 should sweep the site until they are recontained, and all personnel should be notified of the situation, be aware of their surroundings, and report any suspicious activity or SCP-3092-A attacks immediately. No plush toys are permitted within 200 meters of any SCP-3092-A instances outside of testing purposes. Description: SCP-3092 is a Black Tie Toys brand arcade claw machine, measuring 1.8 meters tall, 0.8 meters wide, and 0.9 meters deep, and weighing approximately 144 kilograms while unstocked. The machine's body and mechanical parts are all non-anomalous in nature, primarily composed of steel, plastic, and various electronics, all possessing wear and tear consistent with multiple years of regular usage. When provided power and coins of valid United States currency, SCP-3092 may be operated as is standard for commercially available claw machines. Its anomalous properties only activate whenever the operator successfully picks up one or more plush toys with the claw and deposits them in SCP-3092's prize chute. At this point, the respective plush toys will immediately transform into instances of SCP-3092-A. SCP-3092-A instances are cotton-stuffed, felt plush gorillas, possessing no identifying tags or logos, sitting at roughly 0.3 meters tall and weighing 0.4 kilograms. They are sapient, communicative, and capable of sight, hearing, touch, and ambulation of all four limbs. Additionally, they possess notable manual dexterity despite seeming to lack distinct digits and relevant muscular structures. Outside of this, all instances are conventional plush toys lacking any biological components. SCP-3092-A instances are remarkably proficient in various activities related to guerrilla warfare, such as stealth, weapon improvisation, trap setting, and the maintenance and usage of a variety of small arms. They also appear to possess ideologies crudely resembling various real and fictitious guerrilla rebel groups. They are capable of developing and staging complex plans individually or as a group, and regularly attempt to breach containment, with limited success. However, thus far, all SCP-3092-A activity appears to have been intended to annoy or inconvenience, rather than cause legitimate damage to its targets. All weapons employed by SCP-3092-A instances have been non-lethal in nature, causing only minor injuries. Opportunities to cause severe damage to Foundation assets, such as through arson or the containment breach of other SCP objects, have been ignored in favor of more superficial attacks. Attempts to question SCP-3092-A instances on the subject have failed, with all instances insisting that their attacks are massively damaging with many casualties. Implements and tactics frequently used include slingshots, small catapults, trip hazards, Correction, see addendum 3092-03, graffiti, glitter bombs, and buckets or canisters of various liquids placed atop partially open doors. All SCP-3092-A instances created by SCP-3092 have thus far possessed distinct personalities, beliefs, objectives, and identities. However, when an instance of SCP-3092 comes into physical contact with a non-anomalous plush toy, that plush toy will immediately be transformed into an identical instance of SCP-3092-A, with similar baseline personality, ideology, and behavioral patterns to the SCP-3092-A instance which created it. 
SCP-3092-8 instances appear to be aware of this property, and will attempt to make use of it in order to bolster numbers. Many instances will, after being created, attempt to re-enter SCP-3092 in order to convert any applicable toys remaining inside. SCP-3092-8 instances can be ripped, torn, or otherwise damaged with no greater difficulty than a conventional plush toy. Reactions to damage have been universally and melodramatically negative, with instances typically expressing hyperbolic pain over even superficial damage. Severe injuries, such as deep punctures or tears to the torso, detachment of limbs, or decapitation will result in, quote, death, with instances falling to the ground and ceasing to move, typically after a long period of exaggerated expressions of pain. However, in cases less severe than complete incineration, instances appear to be only playing dead, as repeated disturbance of these corpses will result in them briefly returning to activity and requesting that this disturbance stop, as they are, quote, out of the game. Due to this information, as well as SCP-3092-A's lack of a nervous system, it is not currently believed that they actually feel pain. Repair of damaged SCP-3092-A instances through conventional stitching, patching, and restuffing is typically sufficient to alleviate instances' expressed pain and death states, and is interpreted by them as medical attention. Currently, 23 instances of SCP-3092-A are in containment by the Foundation. Recovery SCP-3092 was retrieved on 5-3-2000 from family restaurant and arcade in Cheyenne, Wyoming, after animal control officers responding to a call there noted anomalous activity. Upon Foundation agents' arrival to the scene, it is believed that 21 SCP-3092-A instances had been created through both SCP-3092 and their own duplication properties, and restaurant facilities were considerably defaced. After killing several aggressive instances with small arms fire, the remaining instances surrendered to Foundation officials and were contained along with SCP-3092 after it was determined the source of the anomalous activity. Civilians present were amnesticized, and a cover story of an escaped pet chimpanzee was distributed. Addendum 3092-01 On 5-18-2000, one SCP-3092-A instance initiated a containment breach and fled via an adjacent hallway. Agent Megan Cho, Noticing this activity while standing guard outside scp containment chamber, fired on the instance with the tranquilizer rifle she was armed with. Curiously, the subject appeared to pass out, falling to the ground and ceasing all activities besides occasional twitches and mock snoring. Subject was recontained without incident and awoke several hours later. Due to increased effectiveness and lowered risk over net launchers or firearms, it is recommended that Foundation agents use tranquilizer weapons in the recontainment of SCP-3092-A instances in the future. Addendum 3092-02 After testing, it has been determined that any weapons firing feather-tipped pneumatic darts is sufficient to induce a sleep state in SCP-3092-A, regardless of whether said dart is actually loaded with tranquilizers. Like the aforementioned death state, it is believed that this sleep state is performative on SCP-3092-A's part. To minimize the potential for collateral damage to Foundation personnel, mock tranquilizer rifles should be used in place of actual tranquilizers. Addendum 3092-03 On 6-9-2000, two SCP-3092-A instances simultaneously escaped containment and fled through the building's ventilation system, before setting up a tripwire in the office of Dr. Martin Helmer, intending for him to trip, fall, and land face-first on a pillow with a crude insult written on it. Upon entering his office, Dr. Helmer tripped, fell, hit his shoulder against a bookshelf, and suffered a fractured collarbone, an injury much more severe than any induced by SCP-3092-A containment breaches prior. Upon discovering this, both instances immediately expressed remorse, informed other Foundation officials of the situation, and were compliant in recontainment. Investigation revealed later that several amenities within these instances' cells had been converted into gifts and apology cards intended for Dr. Helmer. Further breaches by SCP-3092-A instances have not been noted to employ trip hazards of any sort.